Hello everybody. Today's video is about typing on a path. This feature enables you to place type along the edge of any path in your artwork, allowing you to flow your type around the graphic shapes in your artwork. So let's learn how to use it. We're going to start by picking the ellipse tool and draw a circle by holding Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC for a uniform circle. Since I don't want my circle to have any color, I'll press the shortcut D to reset it to the default setting, in which case it changes the fill color to white and stroke color to black. Since I don't want my circle to have any fill at all, I'll press the shortcut front slash to change it to no fill. Now there are various ways to duplicate the circle and you can choose any of the ways, there's nothing wrong in it. But for this demonstration, I'll use the simplest way. So with the circle selected, let's go to edit and hit copy. And then edit once again and hit paste in place. Or you can even use the paste in front option. All right, for the ones who don't know the difference between paste in front and paste in place, the paste in front option considers the selection and places the pasted item on top of the selected object, while paste in place ignores the selection and places the pasted item in the same location relative to the artboard, regardless of other objects. So the difference is slight, but there is a difference. Okay, so now we'll hold Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC and reduce the copied circle to about that size. And because I've reduced the size of the circle, the stroke size has also adjusted itself accordingly. But I don't want the stroke size to change. So what I'm going to do is have the inner circle selected and then pick the eyedropper tool and click once the outer circle to copy the stroke size. Now I need a circle right in between the two circles I've already drawn. And this new circle will be the one where I'll throw in some text. So I'm going to go to object and then blend and go to blend options. Here I'll let the spacing be set to specified steps and change the value to one because I just want one circle sandwiched between the two existing ones and then hit OK. Let's select both the circles now and then go to Object and then Blend and this time select the Make option and you shall find a circle appearing exactly between the two circles. Let's now select our circles and go to Object and then Expand. And when we get this pop-up, just hit OK. When we apply certain effects or use certain features like blends, envelopes or type on a path, Illustrator treats these as live effects that remain editable. However, if we want to modify the individual parts of these effects or use their components in a different way, we'd use the expand option and that's exactly what we've just done. Let's now ungroup the three circles and now our circles are divorced from each other. Now I'm going to pick the Type on a Path tool, which sits under the Type tool, and take it to the circle in the middle, and click once to imprint the text. And the text shall be beautifully placed on the circle. Let's update the text to our own. Next I'm going to select the text and change the font to Impact. I wonder why I end up selecting that font in every tutorial, but you'll agree that it's a beautiful font. Let's also enlarge the font size. 
Now I'm going to pick the selection tool and using the control brackets that appear, I'm going to adjust the alignment of the text. At this point, I'll bring the type on a path options that sit under the type menu. So let's go to type and then type on a path and select type on a path options. When we get this pop-up menu, let's check the preview option. Here you can find the different align to path options. So right now the baseline option is selected. Hence the text is sitting on the baseline. The center option aligns the text to the center of the line. Similarly, the descender option is used to align the text so that the descenders, which are the parts of certain letters that extend below the baseline, like in the letters G or J or P or Q or Y are considered in the alignment, which is why the text is pushed upwards. Now, much like the descenders, the ascender option aligns the text so that the ascenders, which are the parts of certain lowercase letters that extend above the mean line, like in the letters B, D, F, H, K, L, and T are considered in the alignment. Hence, the text is pushed downwards, as you can see. But since we want to center align our text, Let's select that option. The spacing option allows you to adjust the kerning, which is the space between individual characters of the text that is following the path. This option can be particularly useful when the text is on a curved path, much like our text, as the natural flow of the curve can sometimes cause the spacing between characters to appear uneven. So select the spacing that suits your design. Then we have the effect option where we can choose from these options. So right now we're set on rainbow. Changing it to skew will make your text look like it's in a skew. Then we have the 3D ribbon option that gives your text a cool effect. But obviously this is not what we'd use on a rubber stamp, right? Then we have the stair step which is self-explanatory. And the last option is gravity, which is very similar to rainbow. So let's stick to rainbow. The flip checkbox is something we'll use shortly, and that's when I'm going to demonstrate it. So let's come out of this menu. Let's add a guide somewhere on the center of the circle. And we're doing this to ensure that our curved text is properly center aligned. And we can clearly see that it is not at the moment, since the gap on both sides of the text is not uniform. Now I'm going to move the text using the bracket. And then move the guide to ensure both sides of the text touch the guide uniformly, which will ensure perfect alignment of the text. I think we've got it aligned perfectly now. Now I need to put some text on the bottom of the circle. So rather than typing it afresh, let's just copy the text and then paste it in place. Then using the right bracket, move the text to the bottom of the circle as illustrated. You can see my text is upside down and that's not how I want it. So let's bring the type on a path menu once again this time by double-clicking the Type on a Path tool from the toolbar. Let's check the Preview option. And now, check the Flip option, which will flip this text. Now, all we need to do is, using the bracket, move the text to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to select the text and update it. Much like we did with the text on top, let's bring another guide and drop it around the center of the circle and adjust the bottom text to align it perfectly to the center. We might have to move the guide to check if our text is aligned properly. And once we're satisfied with its position, we let it stay there for good. 
Now, to divide both sides of the text, let's add a circle, rather circles on both sides. And for that, let's pick the ellipse tool and draw a circle. I'm going to add black as the fill color and then place it to a side as illustrated. Now holding Shift and Option on a Mac or Shift and Alt on a PC, make a copy of the circle and move it to the right. Perfect. Now our rubber stamp is ready. Optionally, you can change the stroke size of the inner circle or outer circle as you want. So I'm going to thicken it just a bit. You can even add a logo within the hollow space should you want. Actually, let's convert the outer circle to a zigzag design, like in a lot of rubber stamps. So let's select the outer circle and go to Effect and then Distort and Transform and select the zigzag option. In the pop-up menu, let's reduce the size to 1 and let's change the ridges value to 35 and then hit OK. Doesn't it look cool? We can always make further changes to the circles or the text to beautify the rubber stamp, but I'm pretty sure you've got the idea now. So guys, that's all about type on a path. In the next video, you're going to learn about the stylize option. Stylize option refers to a set of effects that you can apply to objects, text or artwork to enhance their appearance or achieve certain visual styles. So ensure to be there. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and please share the video and subscribe to my channel and I shall be with you soon. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.